Hi there, I'm Kathy Barker from Software Solutions, and I want to take a moment to introduce you to Microsoft Planner. Now, Microsoft Planner is an app that comes with Office 365, and you can run Planner either through your web browser, or you can run Planner through Teams or SharePoint um, in a number of places. Now, Planner helps you organize not just yourself, but also others. So let's have a look at Planner via the web. I'm just going to go into my app launcher and from my app launcher I can see planner and if you can't just explore all your apps to find planner. And here I can see that I've got a few plans already underway. But what if I want to create a new plan? Well on the left hand side here you can see the option new plan. Let me just hold my control key and move my mouse wheel forward which is an easier way to zoom in on things with any of these um, web-based applications. So let's choose plus new plan. Now by clicking that button I now have some project templates that I can work with or plan templates. In fact I have five and I have the option to create a blank plane from scratch. But let's say I want to choose a project plan. Let's go with this one. Now at this point I can give the plan a title. So let's say I just want to name it after a certain job. And then I can also add an existing group. This is optional, but I have got a group of people that will be working on this plan with me. And they belong to the document management group. So I'm going to choose that group. It creates a plan using that template. So here is my Microsoft project plan. What I've immediately been taken into is sort of like a bucket um, view. And let me just um, have a look at some of these things. So here's my name at the top here. That's what I named this plan. Here is the group that I chose of people to work on this plan. I can hit this little pin here, which will pin it on the left hand side. So I have quick and easy access to this plan. I'm immediately taken into a view called the board view, which means that I'm seeing these sort of cards. I can also see there's three other views that will eventually work through. And if I click this, there's either more options. Now the members of the document management group are shown here, um, including myself, CB for Kathy Barker, plus there's two additional members that aren't shown immediately here. I can see that the information is currently sorted by bucket and the buckets include initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. Now just like I mentioned a moment ago, if you hold the control key and you move your mouse wheel backwards, you'll zoom out and you'll actually see more on your screen. If I hold the control key and wheel forward, I'm actually zooming in and I'm seeing things more clearly. So I'm going to find a nice balance in my zooming. And here it is here. So the whole process with Microsoft Planner is if you need to create a plan, add various tasks, set the dates that those tasks are due, um, categorize your tasks into various groups by labels and priority and who's assigned to what and buckets. If you need to be able to add people from your team to various tasks and assign it to them, if you need to then be able to track the progress of the plan, then Planner is the application for you. As far as adding a task, you can see here there's a simple button called Add Task. So if I click this option here, I can actually say that we need to draw up Scope Document. I can then, as I mentioned, set a due date. So let's say I need to have it done a month from today. I can also assign somebody to that particular task, so I'll assign myself. And I can assign a second person if I wish, it's giving me that opportunity, but I'll just click back on my name to make that go away. I then have this button to add a task, and so I've just added a task, here it is here, that I can draw up the scope document. And that falls into this bucket called initiating. I might decide that this particular task, draw up scope document, is to occur after these other two tasks. So if I drag it down, 
I can actually put it at the bottom of the list. And there it is there. So part of the initiating process for this project plan is to identify the goals and objectives, to develop strategies and plans, and then to draw up a scope document. What I might do is add another task, but this time to the planning bucket. If I click on Add Task, I could put Procurement. Again, I can set a date, so I might set it for halfway through or towards the end of August. Oh, no, halfway through the following month. Let's go the 20th. And I'll assign that task to maybe somebody else, another software solutions person, and maybe another two software solutions people. And then I'll click onto the task and I'll add that task. So I've now added procurement to the planning bucket. If I was to click on it, as you just saw there, the heading, I can now get into the details about this particular task. I can see the name of the task and I can edit it if I need to. I can see it belongs to the plan, um, job 1154660. I can also see there's two people assigned and if I click this button I could add a third person or a fourth. I've now got four people assigned to this task. I can also add a label such as awaiting approval or waiting review or these spheres here I can hit this little pen and actually customize them. So if I want to edit a label name I hit this little pen and I just update the label. Actually, I call it acquisition. And then click back on the label. And I can see now acquisition is a label that's been applied to this particular task. I also want to await review, so I'll also apply that label as well. So you can have more than one label. This particular task belongs to the planning bucket, but I could change that and assign it to a different bucket. This particular task is not started, but I could at any point say it's in progress or it's completed. The priority of this task can be set to urgent, important, medium or low. So I might say this is actually quite important. The start date, well I might say that I actually want it started at the beginning of August. So I'll choose the 1st of August. The due date, well I already set that to be the 20th of September. If this is a repetitive or recurring task, I have the option to set that in here to daily, weekly, monthly, yearly or custom. I can also add any notes here, such as charge code. I can also create checklists. So as part of the procurement, I need to organise um, building materials, painting materials, electrical materials, the plumber will do the plumbing materials but I do need the plumbing accessories. So I've created one, two, three, four checklist items, none of which are done so zero out of four are completed and I can add as many items as I wish. I can show this on the card, much like is happening in the background here, or not. I can rearrange checklist items with this button, and I can also delete an item using this button. I can add attachments, such as order numbers, etc., or documentation, using this option here. I can also add comments about this. And if I then just simply go to the top and hit the X, I will have completed updating that task. And here it is here. You can see the exclamation mark is in indicating this is important. You can see zero out of four checklist items are done and they are also showing on the card. You can see the two labels I chose are also showing and you can also see the people that have been assigned to this particular task. So that's how you add a task. This, by clicking, is how you edit a task. If you needed to delete a task, let me just close this here. I could just choose this little button here. Um, what would we call that if we rest on it? More options. If we chose the More Options button, I could delete the task. I could move the task. I could even create a link or a hyperlink that, when clicked, took people directly to this task. I could copy or duplicate the task because I need a second task of a very similar nature. 
I could assign more people to this task and I could even apply more labels to this task. So that more options button is actually quite good. Now this is one view called the board view and I can see that here. And in the board view, I've got these tasks grouped by bucket and that's indicated here. But if I click the drop down and say, look, can we group it by who things are assigned to? Then I'm actually seeing that I've got two tasks assigned to Cathy, one to this software solutions person, one to this software solutions person and so on and so forth. And then over here, I can see I've got a multitude of tasks that haven't been assigned to anybody. Now, as far as document scope management plan, I might actually assign that to me. So I can just drag that and drop that into my assigned tasks. Whereas when it comes to monthly status, I'm going to assign that to this person. And developing strate strategies and plans, I'll assign to this person. So you can easily drag tasks and simply drop them onto the various people. And then ultimately make sure that everybody has got something to do. Again, just using that mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so we can group our tasks by who they're assigned to. We can group them by the buckets. We can also group them by progress. So at the moment, nothing started. But if we actually had started to do some procurement, I could drag that into this area. And so that is now in progress. I could say that this is in progress, this is in progress, and even here. And once we've actually identified our goals and objectives, I could say that that's actually now completed. So I can easily drag things between these various progress options. Besides grouping by progress, I can also group by due date. So these are in the future, and these ones currently have no due date. And maybe you need to click on each of these and decide on an appropriate due date. But I could also group by labels. You know how we added the label? So this one's awaiting approval. This one's falling into acquisition. But it's also falling into awaiting review and awaiting review. So again, I could say this we're waiting for approval, this we're actually waiting for review, and I could drag them into the various um, groups. Lastly, we've got priority. So if something is urgent, important, medium or low, you can drag them into the various um, categories. So this one I think is relatively important. Now if there's anything completed, You'll also say, if I collapse and expand this, there's two tasks that are completed. If I drag this into here, make sure I drag it above the completed group. And so there are two things that are important and two things that were important and have actually been completed. Simply drag things around. So in the board view, you have a variety of ways that you can group information. And using the control mouse wheel, you can move forward and you can move backwards. If you don't have a mouse with a wheel, then just use the zoom in and zoom out options that are available with your particular chosen web browser. All right. Now also, in addition to bucket, you can add your own bucket. So initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. If I wanted to add a new bucket, I'm not sure what I would call it, but I would maybe call it... Um, just other and I've made a new bucket called other. If I want to get rid of that bucket I can go to more options and I can delete that bucket, rename that bucket or move it to the left. I'm going to um, maybe just move it first. You can move it either by dragging like this or as we saw you can use the move option in here but I'm now going to delete it and delete. So that's the idea with buckets. Buckets are a way of grouping information that makes sense to you, above and beyond grouping by who it's assigned to, what the due date is, what the progress is, what the label is. Create your own buckets that are unique to you and group them into buckets. Okay, so that's what that option there is. Filtering, I may hit this drop down here and there are a variety of ways I could filter. 
Maybe I'm only interested in those things that are assigned to me, so I want to filter out my tasks. So I'm going to choose Kathy, and it has immediately filtered out just those things that involve me. And then I can untick that to get rid of that filter. I can mix and match it in any way that I want to. And so I could say, give me the things that are urgent. There are none. What about important? This is urgent and important, so I'll take the tick off urgent, and now I'm just seeing the important items. Um, I could ask to see not the important items, but the medium items and the medium items that involve me. So using this filter option, I've got two filters in place, the ones that are assigned to me and the ones that are medium priority. You can filter in a variety of ways and you can hit this clear button to clear that. So that's your filtering. Members, if I hit this, this allows me to see the members of this group who are able to be assigned to various tasks. And I can easily add a member just by typing their name in here and it will allow me to then start assigning them to tasks. I can also hit this little two to see who the current members are as well as hitting the members button. So that's the right hand side of our view. Now some of the other views, let's look at grid. Grid gives us more of a list type of interpretation of the project. So we're seeing the title or the names of the tasks. And again, we can still add a task in this view. We're able to see who's been assigned to what task and again, add and assign people. So you can modify tasks, your, your plans tasks in the grid view as easily as you can modify them in the board view. And you may have a preference. You can click and set a start date for any of these particular tasks. And you can also, um, just by hitting the date picker here, you can also set a due date. If they don't have a due date, you can set a due date quite easily as well. Um, so let's go like this. Okay. Um, you can also choose a bucket in here that you would like them to belong to. And you can also set the progress from not started to in progress to completed just in here. And also change the priority in here. So the grid view is one way of viewing your plan and the board view is more of a card type approach to your plan. Very good for agile project management where you can easily drag tasks between different groups um, as time and as the plan permits, requires. There's also a charts view. Now the charts view is going to tell me graphically there's nine tasks left, six of them are not started, three of them are in progress, zero are late, fabulous, and two are completed. We can also here see the number of tasks by bucket, and if I rest on each one, one is completed in the initiating bucket, one is in progress in the initiating bucket, and one is not started. You can also see the priority. I can see the two of them in progress are of a medium priority, five of them not started are a medium priority, and seven are medium in total, and four are important. I can also see here members of the group and I can see that Kathy is in progress with three tasks and she also has one task that is completed and if I click on it, it actually visually causes the other elements on this chart to alter and so there's an interaction between these various chart elements and to click to zoom in and click to zoom out. The interaction that you see with the um, elements in the charts view is just with regards to members. If I click on a particular member, then I start to influence what I see um, above. Let me just choose this. Now, any part of this bar as well. Any part of this bar will show me exactly what tasks that person is involved in that are and their priority and their bucket and their status. So if I want to know about a particular person, I can just click on a particular person and the other visuals will react to hone in on that person. So that's your charts view. Also any of these particular tasks on the right hand side of your charts view, you can click on if you want to edit any details about those particular tasks. 
But now let's look at the schedule view. The schedule view is more of a calendar type view. In the calendar on the right hand side I can ask for say a week representation of the schedule or a month representation of the schedule. I'm also just viewing July, I can move forward and now I'm seeing August. These will move forwards and backwards a month at a time or if I'm in a week they'll move forward and backwards a week at a time. If I go back to month, I've also got a drop down here where I can choose a particular month and a year that I would wish to view. So the schedule view is more like a, a weekly or a monthly calendar representation of your project. But again on the right hand side, you can click on any task that you want to update the details of. Now in these three dots here, we've also got additional options such as conversation. Now conversation will fire up Microsoft Outlook and it'll be the email that you can use to communicate with that particular group who are working on that project. If I close Outlook, go back to the options here, more, then I can also go to members and members will take me to again Outlook and the members of this group and allow me to communicate with them via email. We also have the option files. This will in fact take me to the SharePoint site where the files are stored that relate to this particular group. If I then go to Notebook, that will fire up Microsoft OneNote and take me to the notebook that's relevant for this particular group. Sites is SharePoint. Unpin will remove it from the pinned collection on the left hand side. And Copy Plan is if I want to duplicate this project plan for another job that's very, very similar to save me starting from scratch. I also have the option to export the plan to Excel, which is very useful if I just save that to say my desktop and save, is very useful if I then want to start reporting on the progress, I'm just waiting for this to load, if I then want to report on the progress of this particular project. I can perhaps hide certain columns, but now I'm getting the task name, the bucket name, the progress, the priority, who things are assigned to. I can hide columns again that I don't need um, and continue to start just reporting on this information that is currently stored in that project plan. So I'll close that don't save. And I'm back to my project. Not only can you send it to Excel but you can also create a link that you can then email or place somewhere useful which people can click when they want to jump immediately to this plan. I can even go into the plan settings and the plan setting allows me to choose a different type of background for example and allows me to choose a different group who I would like to assign to this plan and whether this plan is public to my entire organization or private and a description and also I can ask it to send an email to the group when a task is assigned to somebody who is a member of that group or is completed. So you get email notifications as well as group assignments public and private as well as a particular type of style. I might choose that style actually and then close. And that will be visible on the right and more visible when you're in the board. So the plan settings are important as well. I can also add this plan to Outlook, my Outlook calendar, which is very useful. So I do hope that's given you a good overview of what's possible with Microsoft Planner.
If you have a number of tasks that you want to be agile and move them between groups, whether they be due date, labels, buckets, who they're assigned to, you can easily drag in these various views. You can track the progress of your project using your charts view. You can manage your tasks and who's doing what and just what's being done um, in both your board and grid view. And the schedule is a very good calendar representation of what needs to be done when. So it is very um, date driven, um, but it's a very helpful planning tool. So maybe that will be an application that you would find useful to help you organize your plans. Take care.